A six-month old boy is admitted to a pediatric service for evaluation of failure to thrive. Failure to thrive is the presentation. The child has been small for his age and quite lethargic since birth. That's what you need to write. Lethargic since birth, small for his age. Which means he has not met his developmental milestone because we can say that he's been small for his age and quite lethargic since birth. On initial examination, that is by the physical examination, you notice that the child has significantly coarse facial features as well as significant deterioration of his gums. So now, three words you need to underline in this case, six month old boy, coarse facial features, deterioration of his gums. The combination of these three is the name of the disease. Can tell you the diagnosis. Fundoscopic examination reveals corneal clouding. This is an extra clinical manifestation. And when serum studies reveal highly elevated levels of the lysosomal enzymes in the plasma, you immediately become concerned that the child may be suffering from an autosomal recessive disorder caused by the deficiency of an enzyme, lysosomal phosphotransferase. They won't give you these enzymes name in the exam. Only for you to answer now. So tell me where exactly you studied this lysosomal phosphotransferase enzyme. Lysosomal phosphotransferase deficiency approximately seen by the age of four to six months and the most important clinical manifestations are lethargy, developmental abnormalities and coarse facial features, deterioration of his gums and in most advanced cases, fundoscopic examination reveals corneal cloud. This is what is the overall presentation of the case, what exactly we are studying right now. This is the eye cell disease. Eye cell disease. So eye cell disease is an autosomal recessive disorder caused by the deficiency of the enzyme N-acetyl glucosamine 1-phosphotransferase. The complete name of the enzyme. I'll repeat once again. It is N-acetyl glucosamine 1-phosphotransferase. In simple language, everyone calls it as lysosomal phosphotransferase, but the complete name of the enzyme is the N-acetyl glucosamine 1-phosphotransferase is the deficiency of the enzyme which causes eye cell disease. What is the function of this enzyme? This enzyme is responsible for the development of the mano 6-phosphate signal. I hope you know what is the mano 6-phosphate signaling. You have to know Robin's inflammation chapter really well to know what exactly is the mano 6-phosphate signal. This enzyme is involved in the development of the mano 6-phosphate signal. This signal serves to sort all the lysosomal enzymes into lysosomes during the enzyme production, which means sorting out of the lysosomal enzymes together into the lysosomes. The sorting out of the process is done by mano 6 phosphate signal. And the development of the mano 6 phosphate signal is done by the enzyme called as N acetyl glucosamine 1 phosphotransferase okay now when this enzyme is deficient there is a defective cell targeting for lysosomal hydrolysis right because there is no sorting out of the lysosomes so there is no way that uh, the defective cell targeting for the lysosomal hydrolysis which leads to the numerous enzymes being secreted out from the lysosomes means into the sides of the cell and accumulation of their substrate mucopolysaccharides outside the cell right because the mucopolysaccharides should come into the cell and they should be broken down by all the hydrolytic enzymes which are released from these lysosomes and it will be defective so then what happens is these mucopolysaccharides stay out of the cell because all these numerous enzymes are like shattered out means shattered all over the place not sorted out in one place as a vesicle in the lysosomes this is the eye cell disease. What are the important points to remember? 
enzyme name involved in a mano 6 phosphate signal you should know that this mano 6 phosphate signal is responsible for the sorting out lysosomal enzymes in the lysosomes so then deficiency of this causes a defective cell targeting for the lysosomal hydrolases leads to accumulation of their substrate that is the mucopolysaccharide outside the cell what are the clinical manifestations small lethargic infants with mental retardation just by seeing a small lethargic infants with mental retardation you cannot say that it is eye cell disease right yeah corneal clouding again by seeing this also you cannot say that it is a eye cell disease even though all these are the important clinical manifestations of the eye cell disease the patients are small lethargic with mental retardation corneal clouding coarse faces and gingival hypoplasia is the marker gingival hypoplasia that's the reason they gave coarse facial features as well as significant deterioration of his gums whenever you see these two words in a case without that they can't even form a case of eye cell disease without giving the gingival hypoplasia they can't and they have to give coarse facial features also that's the reason even though all other symptoms we mentioned in this case these two combination of these two symptoms blindly you can say that it is eye cell disease right gingival hypoplasia that is deterioration of his gums and coarse faces along with that anyway the constitutional symptoms which are seen like the patient is small lethargic with mental retardation now what are the lab findings greatly elevated serum levels of lysosomal enzymes absence of mucopolysaccharide urea absence because these are accumulated outside the cell absence of mucopolysaccharide urea because they cannot be metabolized accumulated outside the cell this is what it is treatment there is no specific treatment available only symptomatic treatment and this eye cell disease comes under the category of mucolipidosis mucolipidosis